Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to episode 16 in my second Let's Play series for Anno 1800. In the last episode, we industrialized the farms of Tabarim, setting up oil deliveries, railways, and deploying tractors, greatly enhancing our output. We also began helping out the island of Wahadesha, supplying it with the workers, food, and materials needed to restore the ruins and rejuvenate the soil. And today, we're going to be continuing that quest and also further optimizing Tabarim. So, here we are at Wahadesha. I thought I'd just do a quick kind of recap of the story so far. Essentially, with the help of Emperor Kutima, we have restored the Shediet, the kind of well, restoring water to the Oracle, the Per Iteru, I believe these big ruins, and kind of fixing up the ruins a little bit. But Katima's patience has run out, and he doesn't want to help them any longer because they keep requesting food while they're kind of waiting to get their own crops up and running. We're just at the stage now where we can actually start planting those crops and let them kind of become a bit more self-sufficient. Um, I've also gone through some of the feedback in the last episode, and I know that we had taken on a huge amount of stuff to do. All of these different quests, all of the treasure and diving uh, quests that we've also got going on as well. All the while, we also kind of overhauled all of the farms here on Tabarim, brought in oil and all of that, so there was a lot going on. I admit we were jumping all over the place, and admittedly using hotkeys to hop around probably didn't do you guys any favors, because you can't quite see when I'm about to click and when I'm about to move things, so I can appreciate that it was probably quite a confusing episode to kind of keep track of, although thanks for the kind words on this port, people seem to be digging it, uh, which is nice. So essentially, where we're at right now is with Wahadesha, the fruit of our labor. So we'll go back to Wahadesha and just focus here for a while. Uh, we've got 11 minutes to deliver 20 pocket watches. That's just a side quest with the Katima, and that ship is on its way. So we'll get to that in just a moment. But first off, we have Wahadesha, the fruit of our labors. At last, the time has come to execute Kiria's plan for the oasis and start planting trees and crops to stabilize the land. All right, so here we go. Plant hibiscus seeds. So we have a little hibiscus farm. Plant indigo. Man, they've got all the fertilities, I guess. And plant flax. Flax is actually something I don't think we have. Life. Binyam did not love growing as I do. But I believe he would agree we have done good here. Nice. Only a wise one could restore the Waha and culture respect. With your help, Waha Desha and the Empire will grow greater. Alright, sweet. The place is looking awesome. I mean, these ruins look so, so cool. Just with the water flowing down them. Still not fixed up as nicely as perhaps they could have, if I'd be a little critical. So basically, now we have to sail to Katima's Clipper, headed for Wahadesha to report your success. Now, I'm going to wait for the ship to actually come back in that has the pocket watches. It's not here yet. It should be here any moment. There it is right there. So 20 pocket watches, so when that ship comes in, it'll sail past Katima. So in the meantime, we could do some of our dives and have a look at where we need to go next. So our big daddy ship, we're, we left it in the last episode on top of a diving spot, so we'll just quickly do that. Not sure which one, could be any of them really. We're just using the radar to go around and find them. Alright, what did we get? We got some nice scrap and some spa and regular scrap. Not that great, to be honest, but whatever. Especially for a, a, a treasure map, you think you get something a bit better. But we can always do with more nice scrap Aye. for transmuting. And actually, I think we for I forgot to continue transmuting in the last episode. Um, so our next one is just somewhere out this way. Hard to gauge exactly where. They're, they're throwing out decoy traps all over the place for you to get a bit confused about where to go. So we'll just move there. So while that's going on, we're going to hop over to Cape Trelawney. As I had picked up what we need to do, the transmission of, I think, one of those propellers. This thing here, yeah, the Jet Propeller Hurricane. So there we go, and that can be equipped in all ships, I think. So that's gonna give us a, well, let's have a look. That's gonna give us movement speed 25%, cargo slowdown negative 100%, and damage slowdown negative 100% as well. And the idea was to put this on the 420. So, I don't know where that ship is right now. We'd have to track it. The 420 ship is the ship that brings in all the imports into Mbessa. It's the world-class reefer. Looks like, based on what it has, it must be about to arrive in Mbessa, actually. Um, so, we're just going to send this ship over to Mbessa. To Tabarine. Is there anything else we could buy? Even more maps, perhaps? Not for our particular region, but I'm going to just keep picking them up. And we'll just drop them off. 
at the port. All right, back to Ambessa. <clears throat> Let's see now. I love this music. <laughs> it's Archibald. I always consider it Archibald's theme. I don't know if it is. But it typically plays... I think it plays when he first arrives. All right, sweet. So while we're moving now and waiting for ships to arrive, uh, we can get back to our little port here. I hadn't quite finished exactly how it looks yet. Want to do some of the roads as well, make them look a little bit nicer. That can be a paved road. We'll just make it uh, daytime as well. So this area, I'd noticed in the statistics screen that we're short on hibiscus. Now, I, we've obviously got loads. In, in terms of agriculture, we are brimming with the stuff. Uh, so we're totally fine there. But we need to put down some extra hibiscus uh, tea spicers. So we're going to move this. So basically, I've got an idea for a layout. If we just cut this road here. That can go there. That can go there. This can go over here. Okay, better this island withstood an attack. Extend the road out that way. Actually, you could probably do that. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. So, oh, nice. We actually, that, that worked out very well indeed. Uh, so essentially with that, that's two more tea spicers. I've moved the Tef mill to the back of these buildings, which actually makes sense because it supplies into the into these buildings. One of them supplies two, so that's that actually works out really well. And then this building here, the pipe makers, which are actually going to be low on clay until that ship arrives again. They're actually out. That's a bit of a concern. See, the thing is, I'm hoping to put that propeller on the ship to get the to just increase the speed overall and make these deliveries a bit faster for some of these things. Because having one ship go to three different regions on three separate occasions is a really long time to wait to be delivering things here. So, without building another ship, I'm hoping that propeller 25% speed and reducing the the slowdown of Your all that cargo from it should point. be pretty good. All right, our ship has arrived. Hold the crane. Oh, actually, it circled the corner already. So we'll have to come out here, drop off. The 20 pocket watches are to be delivered here. Bring her around. Um, so let's get back to our diving bell. Let's see where we have to go now. Huh. Oh, there. Cool. Begin the turn. We'll see what we get, and then we have to go kind of searching on the different maps and see where else we can go. I forgot to mention, actually, about the research points. We should probably talk about that. Uh, just once we get this item. Hold the crane. Come before Damn. No item. Only I'm reporting Dropping in. off those um, pocket Aye, watches. Spirits. Oh, so the friendship me. between our people is strengthened. So, he's after giving us a Berkeley Meat something? Let's check that out. Berkeley Meat Sunderer affects dry houses for 40% productivity, reducing 35% of the workforce needed. Now, I'm not really planning on doing anything with... I mean, see, the dry houses are actually the ones that we have in, embedded in the it's city. The snag the market, here and here. I? Tobias compliments you on upgrading one of your exports. Okay, let's check that out, actually, just really quickly. See what's hit a new tier. Hmm. Well, we have gold on top now. Uh, let's go to Lusk, actually, instead. So, yeah, we have loads of gold here. That's excellent to see. Love to see it. This is my number one export. We could probably talk about this in a later episode. But it looks like something has moved from the fourth slot up to the third. We could probably put something else in there. I'll have to have a look at that between episodes, because I could just bury myself in these menus and have a look at, like, you know, what can we really specialize in. But right now, Lusk, our main production island... We wanted, I wanted it to specialize in gold. I think that's a cool thing to specialize in. And swords is kind of more shifting the excess soap that we keep keep kind of garnering, I guess you could say. But yeah, so basically now I've been exchanging steel for brass. Because originally I was thinking like, oh, we could bring in um, different Your types of ore and just make brass. Voyage. We could bring in, for instance, uh, copper and zinc and bring that into the brass smelteries, which we have massive productivity bonuses on. But you could just bring in brass instead, if you can really specialize in something like steel. Um, so not to go too off the rails, but essentially, you know, with these items that we have in here, the reverberatory furnace, the master of forges, and the subordinate, um, 
we're heavily increasing the bonuses it's that we get out of these inspection. things. In fact, I don't even know what we can go up to. It's something like 300... What is it? 250% extra productivity. Um, just from here alone on furnaces. Then the smelters are going up to that as well. But you could just double down on one. And then just bring in brass. And that way we cut out all of the chain for needing zinc, for needing copper, all of the shipping for delivering all those ore here. You know, there's so much to cut out by just specializing in steel and, and something like gold. Uh, that we can Calendia essentially just bring in those things. Buffing. We've upgraded another one. God damn. Every time we get... Oh yeah, look, champagne's gone up to the next slot now as well. God damn. So every time we do that, we're unlocking more slots and things to do. We probably have plenty of room now to expand the docks and make them even bigger. Yeah, we have eight more depots that we can add here. So many more piers. I can't imagine why you would ever need 14 piers when you've already got the loading speed up to 450%, and we can bring that up even higher. So yeah, we can definitely <laughs> really maximize this docks like crazy at this side, so that's going to be another um, I'm sure of it. another speed build to do later in the future. We just absolutely don't have the need Where for that right now, but ever meet my standard? It'll, be, it'll be pretty fun to see that through. All right, let's get back to Ambessa. And let's go back to our diving bell. Let's see how close we are to another thing. Taken with Pretty a close. Pinch of salt. There's it. I think it might be it over there. Room to maneuver. All right. So while that's doing it now, let's go continue the Wahadesha quest line. Wahadesha, where the Jiat once fly. So we want to go to Cargo Katima stations. and tell them that they've restored the water over there and got planting their own crops. I see you have good news. I had run out of patience. But you showed me the virtue of perseverance. Mm -hmm. You have breathed life back into Wahadesha. There is a natural beauty to it now. And many in this city have been inspired by their traditional example, raising gardens and terraces for all to revel in. Is that it? Don't we get anything? <laughs> I hope we get something. Don't know if there's anything more to do there. Nothing yet. Maybe we'll... I don't know. That seems a bit weird. I feel like we should get something. Am I missing something? Maybe. Maybe we have to wait? I have no idea. Well, either way, uh, let's just jump back over to the... Salvager. Is the 420 ship here, by the way? Damn, I think I've missed it again. Um, I need to, we need to catch it so we can put the thing on it. Oh yeah, I think it's intercessional at the moment. Damn it, it's gonna get to Cape Trelawney. <laughs> we'll have to chase it with the uh, airship and drop off the propeller. Complete. Come this of Messiet, the feast of praise giving. Oh, there we go. We want you as our honor guest. New orders. Messiet is a rite of fertility, of life celebrity. It is the heart of Embesa. And we will teach you of it. Sail to Wadesha to take part in the Messiet. What do we get? We got plus zero blank item. That's the first bug oh, I think I've ever crying. found in this game. Uh, we'll do that in just one sec. Let's just queue up where we want to go next. New orders. Any more? Um, oh, the diving spot is over there. That's weird. I guess we just found a, a random one. Uh, yeah, so let's go back to Wadesha. We're here with our ship already. That's why this has happened. Uh, we'll just make it a... Actually, do Dusk is quite nice. I have to think what's best for us. Do I have to click it again? Messiet is a right of it. All right, here we go. So this is... Uh, participate in the Messiet. Observe the priests performing the rituals. Quote, where is Yara? And observe the traditional dancing. Observe the villagers. They're having a great time. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> that is a... Um, that's like the dance from, uh, what's the god, the, the Rick Roll? I can't even remember the actual song. Never gonna give you up. <laughs> the way he's dancing there, or she is. Anyways, uh, observe the dancing. I actually missed what they said, unfortunately. There we go. It is celebration or religious ecstasy. It's impossible to say. But a pure, unbridled energy emanates from the villagers dancing. In a corner, you see Abel and Aesu dancing with a stranger, a young shepherd of unearthly beauty. Oh, nice. I think it's really cool at this time of day. Actually, looks quite good. Observe the Tsar priests. Groups of Irenia crowd in honor... 
crowd into honor the oracle according to the ways of old. Soul bound to the Waha, their chant weaves hymns of lament and praise alike. Something is here, something holy, somehow. And where is Yara, our matriarch? I prefer the calm of the cliff, but from here the Waha looks more beautiful than I ever could have imagined. Ah, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> you have given much. Only fair, we be hot generous in return. I couldn't read it all, and she disappeared. I couldn't click her again. We're in the presence of a virtuoso. Cannoneer, except. Um, Alright, so there's an artifact here that's been left here for us. As is told in legends, where water springs, so is memory unveiled. These soul bonds we would give to you as thanks. You came to us a shema, stranger. Yet learn to listen with hard mouth and soul words. You are one of us, Hamesi. Hi. Nice, we got an ancient tabot of Wahadesha. So it's actually not part of a set. This is just a unique thing on its own. The songs of those who held this tabot long ago still echo through the fragile wood. Fine etchings line the contours. Verse 2, For what is the beauty of day without the coming of the night? To those who pray in the comfort of day, the Lord brings solace. But to those who pray in the fading of dusk, will enlightenment has be provisioned. Its voyage. And it is 50 attractiveness. It's pretty much the most you can get in any item. Selling price 183,000. <laughs> Almost 184,000. Not that we're going to sell oh, it. Why? But it's it's always slightly disappointing with items that aren't part of a set. I mean, it's cool for the collectathon and just want to get everything anyway. But I always kind of wish. I wonder, will, does it have something? Does it have a unique look to it? Actually, that'd be. That'd be pretty interesting. We should um drop it off at our museum and see. I'm guessing it doesn't, because it is just a tabot. An ancient tablet tablet, basically. So it's probably just like inside one of the uh, generic buildings. Room to maneuver. Uh basically, because if it's part of a set, then it's like, oh cool, you know, we got three items together, and then that gives you some sort of worldwide or global buff, uh, which is always pretty cool. Now that is so I guess that's what Dash had done. So we've restored so basically, like I said. Uh, there are, th I think, three outcomes. One is a failure. I, I don't know how that happens, but I guess if you don't supply them or something in time, maybe they fa it fails. Uh, the second one is the one we've just done, where it's like they're self-sufficient. They've kind of set up their own farms. We've restored their oracle and everything. And the third one, spoilers, skip ahead five, five minutes or something if you don't really want to know. The third one, I believe, is where you help them industrialize, where you set up a big canal all through here, and this all becomes farmland. Uh, with kind of crop farms and stuff like that, but in order to do that you actually tear down their ruins uh, I think I think this stays there, but these all get torn down and uh, Obviously, that's a big disaster cultural disaster for them uh, And that's the way I went actually the originally uh, I kind of wanted Emperor Katima to kind of lord over everybody and then him to remain independent so um, But actually that that counts as uniting them um, And you, if you're looking for the achievement for uniting all of Ambessa that does work so you can still do that. I don't know if this one actually counts as uniting them or not. They seem kind of independent, actually. Although, at the same time, Katima seemed happy, so... I'm not too sure. New orders. Alright, so, back to the regular game in a way, for a while. Oh, well, I guess it's the regular game either way, but non-quest game for a bit. Uh, we're just gonna drop off that tablet here. Upgrade that. Gonna go to Cape Trelawney. Our ships should have arrived here now. Both of these are here. The jet engine is here. Please tell me the trade route ship is here. Yes, it is. Oh, right. Nice. They're right next to each other. Perfect. Uh, idle ships. This one. Heading set. So this one's down on this island. Can't put that in there. Obviously, it's not a ship. It's an airship. It's slightly different. Although you'd, you'd think a jet propeller, a jet propeller would work on an airship, actually, but I guess not. So we're just gonna follow this, basically make its way up to the other ship, drop it off on the 420, and then this ship should go way faster. Because with oh, the, this the massive crying. cargo here, it's gonna be really slow. So I'm hoping, like, not only are we speeding up 25%, it's really speeding up, like, essentially 100%, because we're just removing that cargo slowdown. So I guess you'd have to almost measure its speed. So it's movement speed actually, oh, there we go. So it's movement speed is 8.8 .8 knots when it's full up. It's normally 11, at least when we're in a session. And then obviously when we're between sessions, it goes much faster. Uh, probably about twice as fast, I think. 
so for the fact that we're basically going to be gaining about mm, about 20% speed and then plus, plus 20%. So I'd say about 50% speed buff all, all together while using cargo. We're up to 13.8, so it's normally 11 just by default. So that's actually really nice. It's faster than a regular cargo ship now. Alright, cool. Um, yeah, go back to Nate, I guess. Drop your stuff off here as well. Alright, back to the diving bell just for a moment. Let's dive. Didn't have any noise that time. It's funny, I'm actually playing through Bioshock. Um, I played Bioshock 1. I spirits. Um, maybe like, I don't know, a few years ago now. God, there is lots of these deposits everywhere. I really don't know what's going on with that. It seems like too many. Uh, I played Bioshock 1 a few years ago and I never finished it. I always thought it was awesome, I just didn't finish it. There's loads of games like that for me, like Metro and many others. Um, that even though I really, really love it, I just, for whatever reason, something else comes up and takes my attention away. Uh, but I'm playing through it again. Uh, I'm really trying to intend on finishing it now. I feel it reflects the dust. So that I can actually play Bioshock 2 and then Infinite. So I've just I... never played them. Can I interest you in this recently polished app? But I always think about it journalism. when I see the diving bell. I'd love to do like a let's play of something like that, like um, Bioshock or Metro. It's obviously a completely different type of game to, to the stuff I normally do. But it'd be almost like a mini-series, because it's like a more linear game. And I've not played it, so it would be actually like first time kind of experiencing it. Oh, we picked up lobsters? Oh, huh, that's weird. I didn't know you could pick up resources like that. Do we have any more left? That's it, we did all the maps. We didn't really get that much. We got a gantry crane and a potter's wheel in terms of items. And then just lots of nice scrap and... Yeah, not the best haul, I would say. Alright, let's go back, drop that stuff off. I'm going to, um, pick up the Tabot. Actually, yeah, I'll pick it up with the diving bell and go back to, Ca um, Cape Trelawney. And then, with this ship, we should go to Angareb and start the quest chain for that. It's the final one. Into the Lion's Den. Now, I just want to see, am I done building here, um, just yet? This area is pretty much done. We're out of clay, but that we know that... We can see that that ship is now, like, on its way. It should be pretty fast as well. In fact, it might already be here. Which would be really fast. No, not yet. It probably hasn't even left the other session, I guess. Um, so what are we missing? So yeah, it's just clay. Clay is missing in all these things. But we have plenty. I don't think we're going to run out. I don't, think, I don't think there's a concern that the population will fall. At least I hope not. Our lovely farms, they're looking really good. I mean, it's heavy, heavy industry. But um, it looks really good. Only pet peeve of mine is just this little thing here. I could do something where this extends out that way, maybe. But that would, ex that would require extending the canal. I don't know if I want to bother. All right, cool. And I'd said I wanted to clean up this area and put down some ornaments to make the place look a bit better. Now that I'm pretty happy with it, so we'll put down some trees at these different spots. And where there's room for multiple, maybe we can put some barrels and things like that as well. Okay. Just looks a little bit better than it was. Gonna move these a bit further down. Oh, readjust them in a moment. Oh. But my basic idea is to have a double road kind of thing here. Just because I think it'll look nice. And uh, maybe we'll go with one of these. Hmm, something kind of like that is roughly the idea. And then a cut in the road there. And then just basically do this. Copy this. And it makes it look like a bit of a strip. I know that it's um, this is like a worker area, but even so, I think it can still have this kind of thing. A 
something like that. Something that looks a bit nicer, and then we'll try to like make this make a bit more sense around here. So the so warehouse, no one of the big warehouses is right there. A competitor's island is under sea. Can't fit that down that way. So maybe something like this. And then we have a linen mill, which would have to feed into these as well. Hmm. Well, we've got more space on this left side, and it's near the oil harbor, actually. It kind of makes a bit more sense to maybe have it out here. I don't know if I'm super happy with it. I'm just trying to think, though, what else could I do with it? Does that fit right? Kind of looks okay. Yeah, it looks a bit better that way. I know this probably bothers people, but I don't mind it. I actually think it makes it look more, look more natural anyway. Um, but yeah, I think I would do that instead of this. And then maybe this can come down straight to the port. We're kind of out of mud bricks now for a while. So the idea is basically to have a lot more of this stone out here to make it look a bit more natural. Let's see if I can just uh, copy a bit of the... Hmm, they don't have a gap in the fence like they normally do. Something like that's fine, I guess. All right, there we go. So that area is pretty much done. We've got a little quest here. Let's see what's what's going on with this. I wrote a poem because I worry for the nature in Mbesa with all this building. I wish the emperor could hear it, but I doubt it will ever reach him. Well, I could bring it to him. Oh no, why? Oh, wonderful. Uh, this ship, Eli's Messenger. Oh yeah, so this ship can come over. That's our scrap ship. What's that? So we'll just drop this here. And I guess everything else can leave. Oh, we'll drop this here as well. And might as well leave that there. And this can go back to Cape Trelawney. We're done, we've done all the maps we can in this place. And we've got plenty in Cape Trelawney. So we can just pick them up and do them there. So, at the moment, we basically have 1,520 elders. Where the mountains are nameless. And the rivers all run God knows where. And then we have a thousand and ten There's shepherds. A land where life and love is boundless. And interestingly, and scented honey wafts through the air. Sorry, I should be listening to the guy's poem. <laughs> As you can say though, interestingly, we're actually like really even for the shepherd workforce. I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, we should have maxed out both categories. That means they have absolutely everything. If we check their needs Dear Fasika, and happiness. You should have seen the land celebrations here. Yep, they've got everything they need. Today's sea blue on green hills, isn't it? Um, so that's awesome. So basically, we've we've finished this area, really. I mean, I could obviously keep building it up if we wanted to. You could you could always try to get more research from having more and more elders. I don't know if we ever need more than 1,500. Maybe in future, if we want to supply the scholars with certain things, then we can look back here and be like, okay, well, now we need... XYZ because they I think they consume like seafood stew and, and certain things that we can produce with the elders So we have room though for more, you know That's why I don't need to even though I'd like to build a city out and just add more to it We don't really need to at least not right now um, But there could always be something we come back to and do later if we really want to just max the place out a bit more uh, The last thing I'm gonna do is just put down some trees and make the place look a little nicer because like I said I don't want to get lazy I want to actually finish areas. I'm gonna just throw things down like that and just remove a few where it makes sense and then some of these trees are a bit more wild looking so it's a bit more like just just a, to make it look nice and have it like filled in I suppose um, it's just so when we're over here for instance like yeah it doesn't look like just a big bare patch um, and then I think maybe we could do something similar at this way could we maybe oh yeah so this long line here perhaps some um, 
This kind of thing would make sense here as well. And what could we have in between? Um, just either mm, plain grass, I guess, or maybe even the pathway. Oh yeah, the flower beds, maybe. I guess that's a bit strange, just to have it next to grass. <laughs> um, Alright, in that regard, we'll just go with little bits of pathway that could in. Out of mud bricks. We should probably buy some from Katima. That just free that up pretty quickly. We have to go to him anyway with our poem. Can we read the poem? A poem written by a young shepherd who, in times of change, believes the natural world should never go forgotten. Alright, we're bringing our quest down quite a lot, so that's Verdant Verse, and that's to go to there. And then we have to go to Katima's Clipper, headed for Angareb to discuss Angareb's parlay proposal. And that'll be the next thing we pick up. Now, some people actually wanted me to read um, the exclamations up at Katima's area. I do believe this place actually expands out as you unite Embessa, so that might be what's happened here. I don't know what's changed. This might be new. The Imperial Gardens. Let's check it out. The restoration of Wahadesha led to Katima. Uh, led Katima to experiment on his canals and ultimately build these wondrous gardens. Meanwhile, the innovation has spread through Embassa to enhance its uh, existing cap uh, capacities. So here, there you go. That is all new. Better does Island withstood an attack. We could go for a walk around his palace, actually, maybe. That would be kind of nice when we're done. We're not fully finished just yet. So because we've also finished Caduce and Atoni, they might have another area. The Palace Research Institute? The Emperor has built a vast library to encourage the newly united priests of Caduce to pursue their research. Their constant collection of scrolls, tomes, and the most secret and extensive lore has led to an increased yield of research points in Embessa. Yeah, it actually ties into me talking about research points quite nicely as well. And then we have this out here. You back so soon. The Monastery of Tabarim. With Caduce and Atone joining Katima's em uh, empire, the Emperor has decided to enforce his religion in Tabarim. A brand new monastery has replaced La Corona's church, forever suppressing the last remnants of colonization in Emesa. In Emesa. Alright, I'll hand in that poem. As a younger man, I shared the dreams of the shepherds, and to an extent still do. <laughs> Emesa must adapt if it is to rise anew. There we go, that's a poem in and of itself. Hi. Uh, so, sail to his clipper. I don't know why there's a thing above this, though. Oh, is that to deliver the, um, yeah, to deliver the, uh, stuff to start the war, essentially. Hold the crane. Right, so what did we get here? We have the, that's the dry house thing. We could drop that off. So I want to take the ancient tabot back to Cape Trelawney. And maybe we'll take some of the animals. Uh, what else could we bring back? Town Hall cultural items. Might as well just take everything we can. If it's part of a set, I'll definitely take it. Actually, you know what? I always get lazy with that. We should just select Cape Trelawney Crown Falls. There we go. Alright, nice. Lots, lots done. I'm really happy with how we progressed. It just feels like I actually did it faster than I ever thought. Um... But I guess it did take a couple hours. But this, these places are now full. Like, the farms are just completely full. We're just ready to expand if we ever wanted to. So that's always really good. Uh, we've got another quest here. Let's do all these resident quests. We could get some really nice Must items I from do them. Everything? The she festival wants to but weeks away. And there is so much still to arrange. The materials to fashion a proper tabo, for instance. Okay. Tabo. The matter is in your hands now. So what does she want? Uh, 30 wands of timber, 60 tons of indigo, and 10 tapestries. We got it all already. A pin here, a fold there. Perfect. An embassy bishop. As long as the tabo is complete, the festival may proceed. We already have him. Um, but he's basically the guy that will, instead of um, making beeswax and candles and stuff, he'll just take in light bulbs to make the lanterns. But we already have him. This festival is a time of joy. Of family, of gift giving. But what about those who have no family? The shepherd wishes to provide the orphans with something so they too can celebrate. And we'll get the glory of kings, roots of Mbessa set. 
Yeah, let's do this. How typical of the Meniga. Wasting good dye for a moment of fun when it could have been used to the glory of all. So provide them with 40 tons of indigo and 30 tons of paper. Wonderful. Oh, apparently we have it already as well. How are we to count on you if you squander valuable time and resources on menial matters? I don't know. I can help everyone, okay? I helped you and so I helped them. What's the big deal? <laughs> such smiles. So a little effort can make such a change for those with nothing. Okay, all good. Jeez, everyone calm down. Goddamn priests. Alright, let's begin the Angareb stuff. Let's get moving. I'm trying to think, am I forgetting to do anything else? I don't know, I probably am, but... I feel like we're ready to move forward. Oh, there's another thing to look at here. Botanical Gardens. The renewed waters of Wahadesha. events have moved Angareb to Pale. Best I not go myself. Take this flag of truce. See what they have to say. Okay. Um, a testament to the ever-increasing prosperity and flourishing of Mbessa's land tilling. So that's really cool. Like, this place is growing and prospering and getting bigger and better all the time because we're doing different things. And if we failed Wahadesha, I guess there wouldn't be botanical gardens. We should definitely walk around all this. This would be so cool. Take care you do not antagonize the princess. I don't know what we get for Angarep. You know, I honestly don't think I ever looked at or noticed that this place expanded. It looks like there's ruins here, so I'm guessing maybe this place fills out. Get a full, proper, fully restored palace, or built-up palace. So, we've been given a flag. We actually have one already, which is perfect. <laughs> because, um, we're gonna head to the Pirates of Angareb, and they won't fire on us this way. Bring around. Your ship has returned from its voyage. Alright, the Salvager has arrived Hold back in, crane. uh, Cape Trelawney. We want to go drop everything up here. And then test out what this place looks like. Uh, with the tabot, or tabo. Um, what else? Anything else to do here? <laughs> I don't think we have anything to do. Oh yeah, I was gonna talk about research, um, points, so let's do that. So for those who don't know, the whole, um, kind of payoff with Mbessa, or Mbessa, is that back in the old world, we can start to build scholars. So let's have a look at our research institute at the moment. Here it is here. It's currently under construction. We need a thousand free engineers and I'm not capable of doing that yet. But when we're done in Mbesa, we're gonna come back here, basically do everything we need to do to get a thousand more engineers, get scholars and start building a palace. And that'll be truly, that'll be every single piece of content and DLC for the game pretty much done as we overhaul swords for one last time. <laughs> uh, as we build up to 10,000 investors as well, actually. But anyways, uh, research points are basically just generated over time from both your elders and your scholars. Now you get way more from having actual scholars, but elders do give you a little bit. And basically, uh, you have a limit to that amount, right? We have a thousand limit at the moment. And then we'll spend it in the research institute uh, to do different things. But we'll get to that when we actually have the research institute. No point in me explaining it all now. Um, building more houses and having more scholars essentially allows you to increase the limit of the amount that you can store because at certain points you'll have to be you'll be asked to have like spent spend 5,000 on this thing to do this thing for instance you can move oil spills uh, I can't remember how much they are but they're, they're quite a lot so let's just say 5,000 I think it is even more than that but let's say we needed 5,000 to move the oil spills into a more convenient area um, the only way we could do that is if we actually had and maintained a population greater than a certain amount. Because we can only store 1,000. So you can't even buy something that costs 5,000 because we can only store 1,000. So you get the idea. So essentially you have to build this place up and you'll have this big campus grounds for the scholar. Scholar houses, unlike regular houses, actually take up 4x4, four four, not 3x3. Three three. So they kind of require their own area in a way. And uh, some people were saying they'd look really good down by the docks. And they actually might, but I just don't think thematically that would really fit. The island is under siege. Um, I like the idea of them being up here. Some people were saying, well, if you do end up getting rid of these farms, you know, this would be a kind of unique area, or a nice fitting area near the uh, waterfalls and stuff. Kind of like bridge, a bridge leading into the artisans or something could look quite cool. Um, so I am thinking about it. I'm, I'm th I haven't made any concrete decisions just yet. Others are saying, you know, you should keep St. James's Gate as a relic. Maybe keep it in, in, in and around the engineers. It is a massive area. Uh, so it really just depends on how tight space is going to get. Um, I like the idea, so what I was thinking of is, is having, like, the Research Institute surrounded by scholars as a district within the engineers, uh, it's themselves. And then I was also thinking of having, 
Not too sure, but having the palace wrap around something like either the investors or the engineers. Because you can do this like really, really big... You can basically build within the palace if you build it right. So it's all it's all open to interpretations and seeing what it looks like. We'll have probably do some trial and error in um, some time lapses and see like, okay, well, what's what would really be a good fit and how will it look? But yeah, so where's actually the palace? There it is there. So the palace... Oh man, it's huge as well, the main part of it. And then it has all these modules that extend out. We're not going to put it down yet, I'm going to tease you with it. And then what you do is you build local departments on other islands. So you really need it on the main capital island that you're planning on building. And I guess this is the one that we have. Um, even though Crown Falls is attractive. But we could build a local department on Crown Falls. And that basically will get benefits from the palace, I think. I haven't actually tested if, it's, if it works between regions. I assume it does. If not, we'll just build two, I guess. But um, I assume it does. And this will start to raise the attractiveness here quite a lot as well. So I look forward to that. There's lots of stuff to do there. Alright, here we are outside of Angreb. Room to maneuver. And their cannons so, have been destroyed. The Tema sends a lucky. Prudent. Unexpected. Very well then. Welcome. You would have our trust? Earn it then. Show us you are capable of understanding our land and people. Uh, okay. So I guess we have a lot of reading to do. So let's check out the Master at Arms. Overseeing the Prince's meager fleet is hardly a time-consuming burden, so Ours much so... Be a small nation, but there is beauty and glory aplenty here. So much so uh, that the fleet master is taken to carving paintbrushes, several Should've score of them, in his spare time. Hands. Can have a proper zoom in and look at that area as well. All right, next up we have the uh, tapestry workshop. Many unpaid bills for flax deliveries are stacked in disorderly fashion on the deck. A row of stores for bales of fabric lies desolate, desolately empty. And then we have over here, the ceramic merchants. Welcome, come in, come in. Indigo pots? No, I have none of those, you but I do have premise. copper pots with almost identical green hue. Land. Let us hear now what your master would say to us. Parley at the palace? Is that what he said? All right, it's for negotiation. So join the negotiation table once you're ready. All right. Angreb is vast and full of secrets. One would need a lifetime to grasp the soul behind each face and stone. I recommend that you take the Your time to understand us before we discuss a potential alliance with Katima. Angreb is not a pirate faction waiting to be disarmed. We have a history, a heart. Uh, I'd like to take some more time to truly understand your island. Us may be a small nation, but there is beauty and glory aplenty here. So we've already clicked around. Let's just have a reread. So, overseeing the prince's meager fleet is hardly a time-consuming burden. So much so, the fleet master is taken to ca carving paintbrushes. Well, there's other things we can look at as well, I'm sure. The tapestry workshop. We have the shipyard. Overseeing the prince's meager... Oh, it's the same thing. <laughs> well, then maybe we are good to go. The canopies. Can't look into them. Sh shaded tents for shady dealing. Uh, what do we have here? Ruins of the palace. Intriguing runes, seemingly older and more sophisticated than the castle built on top of them. Anything else clickable? No. Battered and frail and sorely need of a makeshift roof. Alright, maybe we're good to go then. I believe I've come to understand your people and your city. I mean, I don't really feel like I have. I know about three things about them, but okay. Tell us this. What is it that struck you most on Angarib? Was it the crafting district or perhaps the master at arms wisdom? Or yet... Oh, we find the people dancing around a fire in the corner of the city to unlock this answer. Okay, hang on. We'll go back and do that then. Dancing around a fire in the corner of the city to unlock this answer. So there is more to look at then. People dancing around a fire. Let's see. Here we go. 
The traditional dances are mesmerizing, a flow of beauty and color, and you find it hard to tear your gaze away from the joy spectacle. <laughs> I loved seeing the dancers in the city alive with revelry and beauty. Our foes may deem us pirates and criminals, but we hold true to the memory of great kings who built the very walls of Angareb. So long as we look to the history and legacy of the Elamay dynasty, we know our path holds true. But the opening of the, gr of the canal has brought with it more warships from the old world. How thrilling! A renowned personage has arrived. Though we don't fear battle, withstood an attack. It is our duty to maintain Angareb in the memory of our glorious kings, a memory we cannot uphold if we are to slowly die and our city to be left to the ruinous years. The Emperor is willing to support your economy if you abandon piracy. The Emperor will grant you the might to challenge and outclass foreign fleets, or the Emperor will restore the monuments of Elame and bring visitors in their droves to Angareb. That sounds good. A fine offer, but Angareb never seals a covenant without a token of good faith. Bring us tangible proof of the Emperor's intentions. Shows that he has the power to follow through. If he proves himself a just and trustworthy ruler, we'll consider bending our knee to him. You are a guest on our land. If we are to trust you, you must first prove your goodwill. Hmm. Deliver one ancient piece of armor or sword of at least rare value. Oh, wow. Cargo boat at the ready. Uh, okay. I don't have any recollection of ever doing that. Pick up an architect at Katima's Clipper headed for Angareb and 30 mud bricks. So let's see, do we have any items like swords or anything here? Maybe we have to pick up one from Cape Trelawney? Dare we donate something as, as massive as like the um, the Battle of Trelawney Scepter? <laughs> Probably wouldn't want to. Uh, let's see what else we have. I guess the best way to check it out would be to go to item screen, look at what we've equipped, identified... Equipped and in storage, I guess. Uh, so we have the Admiral Nadaski's Saber, the Battle of Trelawney. We also have the Brown Brownbeard's Cutlass. Could that work? And where is it? Item location, trading post... Here. Only our reporting in. Hopefully this isn't, like, a crazy... I, I don't know if I'm doing this right or not. Is it in this quest here? No? So, let's see what it said again. Deliver one ancient piece of armor or sword of at least rare value to Angreb. Well, that's what we're... Is it rare? I think it is. New orders. It's epic. Seems good to me. Rare is blue, right? Yep. No space for all this, for the, some of the scrap that we have. That's funny. Oh, let's build an extra storage thing. This place is going to need a dock lens eventually, but um, let's just build these for now. New orders. There we go. Only our reporting in. Alrighty, so that's heading back off to Angareb. We need 30 mud bricks. Hi. We can pick that up from Katima. We have to go over to his lighthouse anyway. On our way. Alright, off we go. This has been a bit more of a chill episode. People seem to be digging the story though. And I like it. It's been so long that so I actually just can't remember. I mean, I remembered Caduceus one pretty well, but the Wild Dasha stuff, that was all new to me, and this, I have no recollection of that. The great work. The princes are wary of your promises. Storing an ancient palace seems a small price to pay for peace. I shall send them my master builder. Okay, so we have the architect. They insist you deliver on your promise before they pledge fealty to Katima and ask you consequently bring them military ships for protection until such time as they can build more of their own. Oh really? I didn't even realize that. Yeah, let's bring um let's bring all of our military ships, why not? Uh Fleet moving in convoy. To Embessa, please, to Tabarim.
That was these, by the way. God, the moon is huge. Holy crap, look at that. Those are our four pirate frigates. Also, weirdly, where are they going? Oh, I guess they're turning the corner of the island. They're heading out that way. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, back in the old world, let's grab um, a couple of our ships that can also go. Uh, our royal ship of the line, of course, which is moored outside of swords. That can go as well. Uh, maybe Stations. the pirate frigate as well. Not going to send the Pyrphorian battle cruiser. We'll just leave it. I haven't actually checked the pirates' places in a while. Is there any ships to buy? Uh, there's the monitors. There's also a quest to do. So glad that Margaret never came back. All right. New orders. Uh, right, so we have the architect, a quest item, and then we need 30 mud bricks. I need to drop off one of these flags as well. Strange novelties brought from your travels? All right, let's just drop all that stuff off here. About. I'm getting the music for an attack. Oh no, fire, is it? I don't see it. Do you see it? I don't see it. I can hear the fire. Um, whoa. Oh my god, how did I not see that? Did I not see that? Jeez. Well, luckily we have firemen here. I mean, a fire like this out here could destroy the entire city, in reality, right? All the thatched roofs and everything. You can see them just piling down the streets now. Good thing we have two fire stations. Not the easiest to get to, though, I guess. This elephant is backing these guys up. <laughs> there they go. That should be taken care of. That's the first fire we've had. Alright, we almost have everything. I'm just waiting on that ship to arrive with the sword, and then we'll go back down. Actually took a lot of our... I guess we should have um, some excess houses, just in case of fires and things like that. Um, placed and ready to go. Might just do blueprint mode for now, and see where we can place things. Little block there. Yeah, I'll want this area to be kind of like separate because it's elders, just a little bit. Something, some ornaments and roads and stuff can go there. So brave, and so many lives saved. All right, cool. Just build these houses as extra. That shouldn't put too much demand on anything. This is perfect to have like a little well. The cherry atop our beautiful friendship cake. Nope. You mustn't. <laughs> I'll just leave it like that. I mean, it looks good enough.
All right, cool. Leave it like that. Oh, this one doesn't have a, a road. See how these. Say Nice. Yeah, so that should just fill up a little bit extra as well. All right, is the ship here yet with the sword? There it is. On our way. We can kind of come out to meet that. And I'll just speed up time as we rush out to get it. Room to maneuver. New orders. I hope this works. It's part of a set, actually, that I'm getting rid of. Mm. Maybe we get to keep it, I don't know. I'm sure we could get it again. Your ship has returned from its voyage. Cargo boat at the ready. It's a sharp turn. Alright. Okay. Alright, Tangreb, we're just around the corner from it. Alright, good to go. Good to go. I think I need more of a plan of what to do while we're waiting for these quests to happen in the next episode. Because <laughs> I've got like nothing to do basically. I'm just not too sure what to do. I mean, we could obviously just build things up arbitrarily. I don't want to hop between regions too much just because people said they don't want to see that uh, that much. So I could just keep hopping here and keep doing things, but rather stay focused relatively in this one region as much as we can. It does mean just waiting though a bit. Trying to think as well, how could I build this area out to look a bit nicer? There's all these like blank spaces. I mean, it's perfect for more industry as we build up. But other than that, I'm not too sure. There's also room for little extensions there. Yeah, that looks a bit better. It's nice now with all the little uh, small boats that go around. This came in the previous update. Just adds a little bit of extra kind of flavor to the area. And these docks, I remember thinking they look like Viking longhouses or something. Uh, these uh, depots. For those who don't know, you can actually hop down and drive these. <laughs> A competitor's island is under sea. Straight lines, straight lines. And if we just do a bit of a wild turn, we can actually see that we are flattening the grass. Uh, ugh. And then we should be able to see the line we made. Oh my god. That'll go away. Oh my god, such an eyesore. <laughs> there we go. Alright, here we are. Carrier about. So make sure we have everything right. We have the architect and we have so the 30 you and the armor. To Angare. Be strong. So this is the person Ketema sent. And he thinks they will be worthy of the great yet Baroque's palace. At last, the palace stands again. It is only fitting that you, who made miracles possible, celebrate the inauguration. Oh, the runes are still wrecked though. Let's check it out. We doubted you. Oh, there we go. But you helped us nonetheless. For this, you may now learn more of our secrets. Nice. That was easy. I don't remember it being that easy. Awesome. Check out what lies below the market. The shady deals. I mean, yeah, it's a market, <laughs> as I expected. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can see anything interesting. The palace was not just a residence, it was a shrine. With the bones of Yet Barak from the necropolis in Kidusi, it would finally be complete. To finally set eyes on Yet Barak's tomb. Shall we then? This man will know how to arrange for the proper transportation of Yet Barak's remains. Take him to Kidusi and Itoni. Let's check this out. I want to read about this. Bare bones business. The princes appreciate your, your services. Angareb is testament to a noble heart. Beware that they do not use you against me. Mm. 
They've requested one last favor. Though, th though the palace of Yetbaruk stands renewed, it will remain incomplete until the bones of its patron and founder are returned to its halls. The prince asks you to find a man on Caduceus Anatoni who will respectfully exhume the remnants of Yetbaruk from his tomb and deliver them safely to the palace. Okay. So we have the artifact specialist with us, and we have to go back to Caduce Anatoni, the priest, to basically dig up that guy and move him. Oh, I wonder, does this always just stay like this? I guess so. Alright, off we go. We'll rev the engines and get moving fast. There's our 420. Our extremely speedy 420. Interestingly now though, even though it's dropped off its stuff, it seems like its movement speed is still just 13.8. I thought it would have sped up, because it was still 13.8 even when it had the stuff on it. wonder if that's just because it's still um, transferring. We'll see now in a second when it moves. I wonder as well, do, how are we for clay and everything now? Just one. Ugh. I bet it's probably heading off to get the clay though. Yeah, it's going there next. 13.8 So it's a little bit slow to the root, but not bad Looks like we're out of clay for, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes They've actually still got some in storage, so probably by the time we get to Cape Trelawney we properly run out And then the building stops working for a bit Have you heard? The new bishop is from the Kidusi Anitoni Monastery. <laughs> so we have the bonus residence research points here. Bonus residents uh, residents provide bonus research from the illuminated scripts now. I think because of how we did Kidusi Anitoni. Yeah. So finally set nice. eyes on yet Baroque's tomb. Shall we then? I never doubted you would. Sail to the Angareb trading post. I don't have the body though. Its I wasn't given it. Surely I have to have been given it. It's a bit weird. You think you would have the item. Maybe they didn't want to put that item in the game. A dead body. <laughs> I don't know. Things like that surprisingly actually raise age ratings and stuff, but I don't know if that's the reason. Begin the turn. Uh, so I think I'm going to have to leave the episode there. We're just approaching just over one hour, I think, at least by my count. So we'll leave it there. And I'll queue up some plans of what to start building and working on in the next episode as we begin wrapping up. We also have the ships just arriving now, the warships, as it were. Uh, which we can actually use, I think, in future when we're seeing what's going to happen between Archibald and Katima. So we're going to have to deliver wood, weapons, and mud. We have all of that stuff ready to go. And then I think what we're going to need to do is bolster up our fleet for a battle. From its voyage. Uh, so yeah, so that's going to be it for this episode today. Thank you again very much, guys, for all the support. Uh, I'll be re I've read comments after each episode, actually, so I'll be reading them after this one. It's a bit of a weird episode, a bit of a wrapping up some stories and then starting some new ones. I didn't have actually much to do in terms of building, but hopefully people like the look of, I guess, this area now. I think it looks great. Um, some people were saying, like, oh, you always forget the roads. I don't forget them, it's just we didn't, you know, we don't have that much mud to always, like, put down, um... A competitor's island extra mud bricks, an attack. Uh, mud brick roads everywhere. But hopefully I've caught up on pretty much everywhere I can for that. I mean, the town has pretty much got mud bricks everywhere. Sometimes I purposefully don't use them to, for aesthetics re aesthetic reasons, but, um... Yeah, this place is fully kitted out with that, and the population is stable, everything seems fine, we never dropped below anything, and we've got extra now in case there's a fire in future. Oh, and there's a festival here now too. Love it. They're provided with, um, clay pipes, ceramics, and finery. Nice, so then running out of clay doesn't really matter. New orders, Admiral. Uh, the uh, pirate frigate has, has arrived here as well. Alright, yeah, so that's gonna be the, uh, it for this episode. I look forward to reading comments, qu questions, concerns and suggestions for future episodes and what we're going to do next. And uh, obviously we're going to do Angareb and then continue the quest here. After that, probably go to Swords and then start building. So suggestions about that is always welcome. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.
Hey guys, thank you very much for watching, and remember, if you want to support this series directly, you can click the Join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits, as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. If you don't see the Join button, it means the video has been copyright claimed, but you can still join from the channel page on desktop. You can also link your account to our Discord to get a special role on there that will give you access to the Senate House and a few other perks.